Hello everyone and welcome to Learning with Jelly. Today I'm going to take you through an overview of everything SAS related. So this video should help you get started with SAS programming. If you are out of time and you just wanna learn SAS programming fundamentals, this is also a great video that's gonna take you from start to finish of the basics of SAS to get you started. If you're a student, this is going to be a great overview and fundamentals for a SAS course that you're taking at your college, et cetera. So let's get started and dive right in. I recommend that you skip to a section if there's a section that you really want to focus on, but I'm going to take you start through finish. And the first thing that we are going to talk about is what exactly is SAS. Okay, so SAS stands for Statistical Analysis System. It's useful for large data sets, data manipulation, modeling your data, statistical analysis, data reporting, data visualizations, machine learning, artificial intelligence, it has it all. So it's very ideal for engineers, programmers, data scientists, data analysts, business intelligence analysts. It's used in a wide, range of industries, which brings me to my next slide, because a lot of people ask why SAS, since you will have to purchase a license if you want it on your window and environment, but there is a free software cloud version that I'm going to introduce you to momentarily. But why SAS versus these other open source languages like R, Python, because those things are free, right? But SAS is still regulated and it has a lot of security built into it versus some of these other open softwares that we utilize for data modeling. It's highly used in government, healthcare, finance um, industries, as well as education, insurance, consumer goods, sports, and a whole lot more. Okay. So as I've already mentioned, SAS has a large availability of documentation, training tools, user support, and security. And it's very, very ideal for large data sets. So insurance claims data, other financial data, government data, pharmaceutical data, it can really eat those data sets and give you out some nice analysis, reports, and overview of exactly what is in your data without a whole bunch of processing time that some other softwares may have. And they have a lot of tools and enterprise solutions that big corporations and business love. Fraud detection software, enterprise management software, you name it. So SAS is very ideal for these purposes. It's also R, Python, SQL. Those languages are also very great to learn. I'm not saying that it's better than another language, but I'm just saying why people sometimes may choose SAS, even though it may cost money versus the free open source languages. So a very important language, very, very um, important as far as user support that they have. I love SAS and I hope you enjoy it as well. So now let's get right into the SAS language itself. And we'll start off with the syntax, which just means the basic rules of how SAS is formatted, how you program, et cetera. So SAS is made up of a series of instructions called statements. And each statement ends with a semicolon. So as you see here on the right-hand side in this visual, I have four statements because I can count four semicolons. So one, two, three, four. Okay, variable names are not case sensitive. So in this case, I have a variable named sex and we're gonna talk about what a variable actually is momentarily. But in the data set, sex has a capital S. So it doesn't matter if I have sex all cap, sex lowercase, it will still work. And this is only for variable names, okay? Indentation does not matter. However, it does make your code easier to read. So other languages like Python, when you're making a for loop, the indents matter. And sometimes you can always get that syntax error. Here, if you had all of this pushed to the left-hand side of the screen, it will still run. 
is made up of two main steps or building blocks, our data and prot step, which we'll cover those later. Right here, you see a data step. So there's four statements within one step. And you also can comment your code along the way. So speaking of comments, it's always, always, always good to comment your code, okay? Just in case you're working on a team, someone else can read your code and know exactly what it is going to do, okay? Where to look for certain um, steps that's happening, et cetera. So add the necessary comments that you need to add. Now, there's two types of comments. One is going to start with an asterisk and end with a semicolon. So down here, and let me get out my little drawing tool. So down here, we see that we have the if sex equals F, we have this comment. Comments are denoted in green by, this, by SAS, especially SAS for on demand for academics. And basically, I started the comment with an asterisk or a little star. And I say filters the data for female students and I ended it with a semicolon. So that's one example of a comment. Another example of a comment is when I start with a slash star and end with a star slash. So the asterisk kind of hug the word. So you have the stars on the inside and the slashes on the outside. And this is ideal for large blocks of code. So say for instance, you really want to explain this program. Your program is a thousand plus lines long. It's a very important automation procedure for your company. And you wanna be as thorough as possible. You can put those big chunks of words and comments in a block comment as you see above. And this comment is great because it can have a semicolon in it. So you can't have a semicolon in an inline comment because it ends in a semicolon, but you can have one in a block comment, okay? So a quick tip, check and comment your code along the way. So every step that you create, run it and see the output to make sure that the output is what you expect it to be. And always, always add those two types of comments to your programs is very important. All right, so now since we have an overview of the language, we know that statements in a semicolons, we know that there's two main types of steps, data and proc steps, and we know how to comment our code. Let's get into the data, okay? So SAS reads data in form of SAS data sets. And if your data is not a SAS data set, you can always import the data into a SAS data set, okay, which we're gonna cover later. But pretty much they are made up of variables and observations, okay? So your variables are considered your columns, okay? So in this case, I have the variable name, I have the variable sex and I have the variable age and your observations are your rows. So this is observation one, Alfred, observation two, Alice, et cetera. These observations I also like to refer to as data points. And that's going to be important in our future sessions when we talk about data analysis, statistics, things of that nature. Variables and observations make up what we consider data sets. Okay, and we're gonna go over how you name a data set, et cetera. All right, so variable types. So there are multiple, there are two main types of variables that SAS has, and it's character and numeric, okay? So character can be numbers or letters, okay? It's left indented in the data set. So if you don't know if something is numeric or character, you can look and see how it is indented or justified, better yet. I should say that it's left justified in the data set. And numeric are numbers only. It can have plus signs, negative signs, decimal points, and the E for scientific notation but it's always gonna be right justified or right aligned in the data set. So in this case, I see name is character because number one, it has all letters, but I also see that it's on the left-hand side of the variable name. So Alfred is touching the left-hand side, whereas numeric 
age is numeric and it is touching the right hand side okay so some variable names are going to be obvious on whether their character are numeric others not so much so it's always good to look at if it's left justified character or if it's right justified numeric so now let's see how we can actually name these variables because sas is picky when it comes to how you can name things okay so variable names have to be 32 characters or less so as you see in the previous slide name sex and age are our variable names because there are columns and they have to be less than 32 characters long. They also have to start with a letter or underscore, and there's no special characters except underscores, okay? So this is example of what, how to name your variable. So you can have it named, this one starts with the underscore, this one starts and ends with the underscore, and this one has letters and numbers, which is completely fine. Whereas this one has an exclamation mark. You can't use exclamation marks in variable names. You can't use any special characters except for underscore. This third example here is more than 32 characters long. So that's a no-no. And this one starts with a number. So you cannot start a variable name with a number. You can only start it with a letter or an underscore. So keep that in mind when you're creating new variables for your data sets that you actually have variable names that meet these rules above. All right, so now I'm looking at data and we can talk about missing data because a lot of data that we get in companies and organizations is missing. Either someone didn't fill it out, not everybody answers the survey questions, so you may have tons of missing data, okay? So missing data for character variables is always going to be denoted by a blank. So in this case, we know name is a character. How do we know that is because our names are left justified, okay? So I see that this is blank. So I know that this person is missing. The name here is missing. Missing data for numeric variables have periods, okay? So age, once again, is numeric because it's right justified. I see that Will is missing his age because I see a period there. Now, you can write if statements, which we're gonna talk about in the future, as well as there are certain functions where if something is missing, you can replace it with like missing age or you can replace it with the mean, of that variable if you're trying to, do, or the median, if you're trying to do some modeling or data analytics, et cetera. All right, so that goes over variables. So we have two main variable types, numeric and character. Character variables are left justified. Numeric variables are right justified. If character variable data is missing, it's going to be noted by a blank. And if numeric variable data is missing, it's going to be denoted by a period. All right, so now let's go into those building blocks that we talked about earlier, which is data versus proc steps. So remember, every step is made up of statements. One statement ends with a semicolon. So what is the difference between these two steps? Well, data steps help you create and modify SAS data sets. Sometimes you can refer to this as data manipulation as well as data cleaning. So if there's a lot of missing values in a data set, you can go in with a data step and change those missing values to something that's more representative for your company. If you want to create new variables, you can create that in a data step. If you want to filter or subset your data set, you can do that in a data step. Whereas proc steps are like procedures, right? And they perform some type of process. They analyze the data, they print reports, et cetera. So it's proc means, which we're gonna talk about later. Proc sort. All of those are procedures on how to sort your data or how to get summary statistics of your data. Both 
of these steps are made up of statements. So as we've already said previously, for this first data step that we see down below, we have one, two, three, four statements because we have one, two, three, four semicolons, okay? So this data step is made up of statements as well as this procedure step. Some statements are specific to a certain step, okay? So you can't use a set statement in a procedure step or a proc step. It will not work. So make sure that the statement that you are using is for the right data step. And we're going to see some examples momentarily, okay? How do you end a step? So in the previous examples that you saw, you see how I've had run. Quit is also a common one to stop certain analysis for performing, stop abort, or if it encounters another data or proc step. So how does SAS read this data step, okay? So the data step is executed line by line, observation by observation. So it sees one observation at a time. Now this can be overwritten with something called the retain statement, which you can look up, but pretty much it's gonna go to the first observation and it's gonna go through line one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. And it's gonna output that to the output data set. Then it's gonna read the second observation and go through line one, two, three, four, five, et cetera and then write that second observation to the output data set. So the data step is executed line by line, observation by observation. So a quick tip from this section, check to make sure the right statement is in the right step. So the example that I've already given you, a set statement cannot be in a proc step. So make sure whatever statements you put in your data or proc steps, that those statements are actually appropriate to use. All right, so let's talk really briefly about the SAS log. So the SAS log has a lot of information. So when you're sitting in SAS on demand for academics, you're gonna have this code, then you're gonna have a log, results and output data. So before we dive into what is exactly in the log, let's go through SAS on demand for academics. Now, if you do not have this software already downloaded, I have a tutorial on how you can download and sign up for a free account. This is a free cloud online platform that allows you to program in SAS for free. Okay. So this is how it looks when you first open up there's going to be all of these little things that you can do. Um, you have your libraries down here, you have your task and utilities, and you have your file shortcuts, things of that nature. And it looks like that I am missing my files and folders. And underneath files and folders, which is gonna be the first one that pops up, you're able to click this little star and start a new SAS program. So in this program, you can type, 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 and execute your SAS code, okay? And you can also store your SAS code in a library, which we'll talk about later. But pretty much, you have your run button, you have your save button, and you have this little three bars up here that if you lose one of your windows, it's probably just unchecked. So say for instance, I can't find my files, I unchecked it so I can just go to this three bars, hit view and recheck files. There's save as, in order to save a SAS program, you have to click on something first. So I want to save this file in files home program one and hit save. And there's a lot of things that you can do within this software. If you click files home, you can upload data from your computer. You can also download data from your computer things, I mean, from your SAS cloud, et cetera, et cetera. So this is how that interface looks. And this is where the log is located, which is gonna give you some errors, warnings, and notes. So let's hop back from this interface. 
So the log is gonna give you notes on the version of the SAS that you're using. It's gonna give you data set names. It's gonna tell you the number of observations slash variables, line numbers, computer resources that were used, etc. So really quickly, we can go to my program that I already have open. And I'm just gonna run this data step and we're just gonna check the log. And we see that in this data set is giving me an error. So it's saying, hey, you have an error on this line and it actually underlines it for you, right? And it says that there's a syntax error. Something here is missing, okay? It also tells you any notes or warnings that you may have, and it tells you the processing time and how much memory that took up. So then I can go back to my code and I'm all like, hmm, what's going on with this code? And then I can make the appropriate adjustments as such, okay? Okay. So that is a brief overview of how we could get an error in our SAS log and how that would show up for us. And it will tell us exactly what's going on there. Okay, so you can write notes to the SAS log. So in this example, I'm creating a new data set called class underscore report from an existing data set called sashelp.class. If the sex is equal to F, and I'm saying, hey, put report for female students only, that put statement is gonna write that in the SAS log based off of how many times. So let's just go back here to our code and let's type that, okay? So one thing about the data step, which we will get to momentarily, is that you can create new data sets. So if I wanna create a new data set, I use the data step. So it always starts with the keyword data and then the name of the data set that I want to create. So I'm gonna call this class female report. And if you type this along with me, it will work exactly for you because you have access to this data set since it's in the SAS help library. And I'm gonna say set SAS help dot class, because that's the data set that I want to use. And if I expand libraries on the left-hand side and I double-click class, I see that I have this sex column with M and F. So I'm going to say if sex is equal to F, because I only want a female report. Then in my log, I'm going to say put female observation. Each statement needs to close with a semicolon. Run. So I'm saying, hey, if the sex is equal to female, write in the log that that was a female observation or a female data point. So when I run this, I see that my output data comes up with only females. But if I click log and scroll up, I see, hey, it said female observation nine times. It told me originally I had 19 observations and now because I have filtered my data, I only have nine observations and five variables. And it tells me how long that took, okay? So that is what the put statement does and how that appears in the log. Like I said, if you type this block of code for yourself, it will run for you. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Even if your code runs, always check the log. Did you lose data? So that is a good way. Our log is a good way to figure out if the number of observations we have is expected. So for instance, originally we had 19, it went down to nine. That's expected because I filtered to the data. But maybe something happened where you ran a block of code and it filtered out 70% of your data and you didn't want that to happen. So it's always good to check the log, even if it doesn't have a big red X next to it, just to make sure that your data set is intact. 
Okay, so now since we talked about the log and what's in the log, let's talk about the SAS On Demand for Academic Interface. Now, this is a free cloud software where you can practice your SAS programming, okay? Some of you may have already downloaded a base SAS version on your windowing environment. That is fine as well, but that requires a license. So if you don't have a license or want to spend money for a license, then you can use this SAS on demand for academics. I'm going to have a link in the description on how to navigate SAS on demand for academics, but pretty much click. Okay, click around, see what happens on everything that you do. The main thing is how to start a new SAS program, how to run your code, and how to save your code, okay? And how to go to the log and the output data, as well as your libraries on the left-hand side of the screen. Those are gonna be the most common functionality that you utilize in this interface. But please take a look at that video. It takes you all the way through that interface. Okay, so now let's talk about importing data, SAS libraries and important data and what those are. So SAS organizes its data set in library. So you could think of a data set as a book and that book belonging to a main library, okay? So that is how SAS organizes its data set. By default, you have three built-in libraries in SAS. You have your work library, which stores temporary SAS data sets. You have your SAS help library, which contains sample data sets for you to practice. And you have a SAS user library that's provided to you, which is a place to save your data sets. Now, we already looked at one of these. So in the data step that we just ran, Notice how I was said SAS help dot class. So SAS help is the library and class is the data set name. So if I expand libraries on the left hand side and my libraries and I expand SAS help, there should be a data set called class. And in fact, it is. So I'm reading this data set and in the first line, this is the new data set that I'm creating. So because I do not have a library in front of this data set name, this data set is going to be stored in my temporary work library. So if I collapse SAS help and I expand work, I see that I have a data set called class female report. Now your work library is temporary. That means once you log off, it will no longer exist. It'll boop in thin air. So if there is a data set that you want to work on for days, weeks, months, et cetera, you need to make sure that you save it to a permanent library, okay? All righty. So how do we establish a permanent library? So I just went over one level name. So one level names, just as we have here. So it's one level because it doesn't have a dot in here, right? That will automatically get stored into your work library. It's automatically understood that that is a work data set. A two level name that has a library dot data set name is going to be a permanent library. And you can create these permanent libraries for yourself. So say, for instance, I have a folder on my computer or some data that I want to upload from my computer into, into SAS On Demand for Academics. I can do that with what we consider a lib name statement, okay? So that's just a library name statement. And pretty much it starts with the keyword lib name. It's the name that you want to call your library. So just like the previous library was SAS Help, I like to call my library my data. If it's demographics, I like to call it demog. If it's time data, I like to call it time, et cetera. And you point it to the file path that the data is located on your computer 
or located within the cloud, okay? So let's see an example of this. So on the left-hand side, if I expand server files and folders, okay, and I expand this, and say for instance, on files home, I want to create a new folder. So for SAS on demand for academics, I like to create a new folder to upload all of my data that I wanna work on from my computer. So I'm gonna call this class data sets. And I like to kind of keep my folders one word, spaces can act funky. And I'm gonna hit save. And so now what class data sets, I notice that I don't have anything in it. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm going to upload the data from my computer. So I'm gonna say, choose files. And I might not have any good data. Let me do this hypothyroid data. And then I'm gonna hit upload. Okay. So now, since this is a CSV and we're gonna go over importing data later, but I might as well do it now. You can right click this and you can put import data. And once you do that, SAS and SAS On Demand Academics is going to bring this up, okay? It automatically gives you your PROC import procedure. It tells me that the database management system is a CSV file. That can be an XLXX file, whatever it needs to be. And you just hit the run. Okay. And it's going to say, all right, there is some data. The output data set name is going to be work underscore dot import. All right. So say for instance, I wanted to, and let me just go to my libraries real quick, and I'm going to download a sample work library. So that class female report, let's export that. And I'm going to export that to class data sets. And then when I expand, I see that here and I can import this, change it back into a SAS data set. We're just doing this so we can have an example of a SAS data set. And then that one's called work import one. Awesome. Okay, so. Say for instance, I want to create my own library that's just going to read in the stuff that I have in my class data sets folder. So I'm gonna call that library my data, and then I'm going to point to this folder. So some of you, you may point to the folder on your Windows, on your Mac. If you're using SAS on demand for academics like I am, you're just gonna right click this and hit properties. Then you're gonna copy and paste this location because that is your file path. Okay, and then you're gonna hit run. So once again, it takes me to the log. It says that it was assigned. If I expand libraries, my libraries, and then now I should have my data library here. So now I can write all of my data sets to this lib name, my data. So for our class female report, we can say my data dot run this. And when I expand my libraries and my data, I have the class females report there. So that is how you create your own permanent library. So say for instance, you wanna save the data sets in your permanent library. You start with the keyword lib name, you name your library, and then you point to the folder where you wanna save your data sets at or read your data sets from. So if you already have SAS data sets on your computer to work with, you can point to that folder and you will definitely see those SAS data sets be imported into SAS. Okay, so that is libraries. So some rules here. 
So my data, you need to name your libraries a certain way. You can't just name them anything. So they can only start with a letter or underscore. They can't be more than eight characters and they can only contain letters, numbers, and underscores. So my data, one, two, three, four, five, six is six characters. It contains all letters or numbers. This is good to go. But you can't do this. My data underscore 1235. That's too long. Okay. So keep your libraries to eight characters, letters, and numbers. It needs to start with a letter or an underscore. Okay. So that is libraries. So importing data, we went over how to import data in SAS On Demand for Academics. So if you hit this file and you hit import data, you can select a file from your computer. Or, and let me go to files home. I'm like, where is this going? Oop, import data one, import data two. How I like to do this is I like to go to files home, click this upload button, choose files, go to your computer and choose the files that you wanna upload. And then you can right click on that file that you upload, click import data, and you're going to run it, okay? So that is how we import data into SAS. If you have more questions about SAS libraries and importing data, I'm going to link my SAS library video so that you can follow along with that as well. If you aren't using SAS On Demand for Academics and you're using a window environment, you can use the PROC import statement, okay? So the first thing that you're going to have to do, and let me do my pen, is you're going to have to create your own library. So they created a library called SAS Files, and they want to store it here on their computer. From there, they do a PROC import data file. Okay, so they copy the file path of where the data file is located. Out equals, out is where they wanna store it as a SAS data set. So they wanna store it in the SAS files library and they wanna call it Magnolia. Database management system equals is the type of file that it is. So in this case, it is the file extension. It's the XLSX. So it is an XLSX, and then you can hit run, okay? So if you copy and paste this into your window environment in base SAS, that is how it should work. If you are, the slashes matter, okay? Whether you're on a Mac or Windows, you would use backslashes versus forward slashes, et cetera. Okay, tip. Store temporary SAS data sets in your work library. If you're just playing around and exploring your data, there's no need to keep storing all that data on your computer. It takes up computer space. It affects processing time. So if you are going to save SAS data sets, make sure that that is pretty much close to your final copy or it's a data set that you need to continuously work on. If you're just doing basic look at the data, Store that in your temporary work library. Okay, so now since we went through libraries, in order to assign a library, you, we use the lib name statement. We can upload files from our computer or data from our computer into SAS On Demand for Academics, and we can import those as SAS data sets. Now we want to go back to those building blocks. So remember, SAS is comprised of a data step and a proc step. And so now we're going to look at the data step and take a deeper dive into it. So data step from modifying data. So it helps you create new SAS data sets from existing ones. You can create a SAS data set from raw data. So that means you can convert a text file to a SAS data set, a CSV to a SAS data set, a .dat to a SAS data set, or you can type in raw data directly into SAS and turn it into a data set. All right. 
You can subset or filter your data using conditional statements. We already saw this when we filtered our class data for female students only. You can read in non-standard data, and we're going to talk about the difference between standard versus non-standard data momentarily. But briefly, non-standard data has special characters in it. SAS cannot read special characters, so in order to read in special characters, we have to do some special formatting to that. You can modify your data using functions. So there's tons of functions. There's breaking up variables. There's putting variables together. There's mathematical functions. There's date time functions. There's a whole slew of functions that you can do in a data step. You can replace missing values. So as we already know, if a numeric variable has a missing value, it will be denoted by a period. If a character variable has a missing value, it'll be denoted by a blank. You can create new variables. You can merge data sets together and you can do a whole lot more. So we're going to highlight some introduc introductions on each one of these bullet points. However, look at SAS documentations if you really want to dive into any of these bullet points deeper. Okay, so you can create a new SAS data set from an existing one. So remember, when you want to create a new data set or overwrite an existing one, you use the keyword data followed by the data set's name. So in our class example, this was our keyword data, and we typed in our data set name. So we are creating the data set class female report, and we're going to store that in the My Data Library. Okay. Then the next statement, if you want to read in an existing data set, you use the set statement. So any existing data set that's already created that you want to read from, you're going to use the set statement. So we wanted to look at the SAS help dot class data set and everybody has the SAS help library and everybody will have the class data set. So I am reading in that data set. Then I have my other statements, right? If the sex equals female, then put female observation, okay, in the log. So this is going to, this writes to the log. All right, so now I did my comment with my asterisk and my semicolon, okay? So this example below, we're creating a new temporary data set called class underscore report. How do we know that it's temporary? Because it doesn't have a dot in front of it. It's just a one level name. All of one level data set names get stored to your work library, Work library only has temporary data sets. So once you close out of the session, they disappear. From the existing permanent data set, sashelp.class. How do we know that it's permanent? Because it has the two level name, sashelp.class. And the first level is not work, it's sashelp. All right, but what if we want to read in data that's not already a SAS data set? or data that we just want to type in to our interface. How do we do that? So we do something called data lines, okay? So you can type in data directly into SAS using data lines, okay? This is only ideal if you wanna practice programming like we are doing now. If you wanna test out a few data points, okay? things of that nature. You don't want to type in thousands and thousands and thousands of lines of data, right? That should come into in a form of a text file, CSV file, Excel file, something of that nature. Data lines are created after the input statement. And this input statement states variable names and the variable type that will be in your data line. This statement can also be used when reading in non-SAS data sets like text files, Excel files, et cetera, with the in file statement. And I give an example down below. So we're creating a new data set called test underscore set. 
and I want to input the variable names. So since I'm not reading from an existing data set, SAS does not know what those variable names are in the raw data that I'm going to type in. So I said, hey, I'm gonna type in name and name is a character. How do I know that name is a character in this case? Because of the dollar sign. Dollar sign means character variable. Remember that. So in my input statement, I'm saying my first variable is gonna be name and that's gonna be character. Then my next variable will be height, which is numeric and it has no dollar sign and weight, which is also numeric, so no dollar sign. And then I type it in, type in three observations. Ben, name, 154 centimeters, height, weight, 182. And then I can run this. So this input statement lets us know what are the variables in your raw data. Okay, so let's look at that in SAS Studio for our input statement. Let me just go up. Here we go, and I'm just gonna copy this section because we're gonna go over that in the next slide. And I'm just gonna take out these numbers. All right, great. So now when we run this, we get a little data set out, okay? Called test underscore set and is stored in our temporary work library. Now, You'll also see this input statement, and I'm just going to type for demonstration, right, is if you have this in file line. So say, for instance, I have in file, and I have some type of path where it's um, documents, and in my documents, I have a data folder, and within that folder, I have a test.txt, right? So anytime when you have an in file statement, you need an input statement, okay? Because SAS will not know what the variable names are in this text file because it is not a SAS data set. So you need to tell it what the variable names are. Remember, a dollar sign after the variable name means that it is a character. No dollar sign means that it's numeric. And I'm just gonna comment this out because I don't have a text file on my computer called that, but that is how you would use the input file if you were going to import in some raw data. All right, so raw data in columns. So sometimes you may get a messy text file where it has a whole bunch of raw data in it where it's misaligned, it's in columns, there's no spaces in between things, et cetera. So you can use column numbers to point SAS on where each of your variables start and end at. So in this example that we have right here, okay, that's taken from the sixth edition of the little SAS book, we see that Columbia peaches playing peanuts is not the same link. We see that there's some missing data here. And we need to tell SAS exactly where this starts and begins, okay, on each one of our things. So from line one to, it seems like 16, would be our name, right? And it seems like from line 21, right? up into line 24 is going to be our next variable. This is gonna be variable two, etc. So this is easier to read when we have data lines. So let's go back into SAS Studio and see this in action. So here I have the same thing that we have up here, except for now I have used column pointers, okay? And this is ideal mostly when you're reading in crazy files with tons of variables and it's unstructured pretty much. So I'm saying my name is on lines one through six, okay? Because if I start at the beginning, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. My height is seven to nine, 
seven, eight, nine, 10. My weight is 11 to 13, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so it always ends at the column where the longest variable stops at. So Pablo stops at six. This is why that stopped at six. Okay, including that little space. All right, so that is how we use column pointers. There's a whole lesson that I have on column pointers and reading in raw data. I recommend that you go look at that if you need to look at raw data. But pretty much we have this input statement that tells us variable names when we type data directly into SAS or if we read in a non-data set. You do not use an input statement with a set statement. A set statement is only used on SAS data sets and SAS already know what those variable names are. So you do not use an input statement with a set statement. You either use it by itself if you're typing in raw data lines or you use it with an in file statement. Okay, so that's some insight on raw data. Now let's go through conditional statements. We already saw an example of this when we filtered our class data set for females only, but that, let's look at this more. So if statements are great when you want to subset your data, it's a common statement across a lot of programming languages. So you're going to see these statements in Python. You're going to see them in R, et cetera. And our first example is we created a temporary data set class report. We read from an existing data set, sashelp.class, and we said if the sex is female or equal to F, then delete. Simple if statement. So it's going to delete all of your females out. Now, we have a longer conditional statement here. And we say if length 1 is less than or equal to 15, then fish size is small. Else if length 1 is greater than 15 and less than 25, fish size is medium. And else fish size is large for everything else that's in the data set. OK, so this is a more complicated if then statement than this one. Right. There's multiple levels that I want to look at. So I need an else if if there's more than two levels of that condition that you want to look at, you're going to utilize an else if. OK, so let's see how this looks like in SAS Studio. And how about let's just type it right here. So let's do our comment and type um, conditional. And let's go to our libraries on the left-hand side, expand libraries, expand SAS help. And let's go down to cars and double click it to open it up so you can see it. And let's say that I only want to look at cylinders, okay? So it looks like cylinders can either be four, six, or eight. So let's write an if statement of that, okay? So we're going to create a new data set. So keyword data, new data set is going to be cars, cylinders. I'm going to read from an existing data set that was in our SAS help library. So I'm going to say set SAS help dot cars. Okay. And then I want to do some conditions based off of the number of cylinders they have. So if cylinders equal four, then I'm going to create a new variable called car size is equal to small, semicolon. Else if cylinders is equal to six, then car size is equal to medium. And because these are characters, I need to put them in single quotes, comma, Else, everything else is going to get a car size equal to large. Semicolon run. So now when I run this, my output data, scroll all the way to the right, I should see that there's car size here. 
Everybody either has small, medium, or large. It looks like medium is cut off. So let's do a length statement here. So above the set, I'm just gonna establish that the length of card size is going to be equal to 20 characters. Since it is a character variable, it needs a dollar sign in the beginning of it. And then when I run this, I see that it pops up to the beginning and I see medium is no longer cut off, okay? So this is an example of how we would use an if, else, if, else statement to create a new variable based off of a condition that already exists in our data set. Now, there's something called an if then do statement. So say for instance, based on a condition, I want to perform more than one action. If I wanna perform more than one action, I do a if then do statement. So in this example here, and feel free to type in this example if you would like into your own SAS on demand for interface because you all have access to these data sets in the SAS help library. I'm not using any imported data. That way you all have access to the data sets that you need to follow along. So I'm saying if length one is less than or equal to 15, then do two things. Set a new variable called fish size to small and set its location to salt water, end. So if I have an if, then do, then I need to close it with an end afterwards. And so let me put end up here. Then I have another then do statement down below here, right? So if the length is greater than 15, but it's less than 25, okay? Then do fish size medium, that's one action and the fish location to fresh water. That's the second action. And then we end it. Each one of my actions get a semicolon. Don't get tripped up by that semicolon. Most of the time if you have syntax errors, I can guarantee you, you miss the semicolon. I do it from time to time myself. All right, so let's see how this is going to look. Let's go ahead and modify this statement that we just wrote. And so let's get rid of this. And then I'm gonna change this to a then do and I'm going to hit enter. So if my cylinders is equal to four, then I want then do, ooh, let's reconnect. Come on, SAS Studio, reconnect. Now we're connected back. <laughs> Thank you for your patience with that. If my cylinder is equals four, then I want the car size equal to small. And let's say I want to say popularity equal to high demand. So based off of the data that I've gotten from, you know, my job, whatever the case may be, I need to create these two new variables based off of this conditions in the data set so we can keep track of it. So now I'm going to run this. Oh, there was one unclosed thin do block. So that means that we're missing a semicolon, right? <laughs> oh, actually we are missing in end, right? Remember the if then do end? That's exactly what we need. And we also need that semicolon after then do. Okay, so I see the ones that have cylinders of four, it's small. And then if I scroll all the way down to popularity, it says high demand. Okay. So basically we use a then do when we wanna perform more than one action based off of a condition. So that is just an overview of conditional statements. It's a good way to filter your data. It's a good way to subset your data. It's a great way to create new variables based off of conditions. Conditional statements pretty much does it all. So now that we went over our conditionals, the next section for us is going to be informats. Now, informats are utilized when there's non-standard data. 
So I think I've mentioned this before we started, what non-standard data is in SAS. SAS does not recognize special characters uh, outside of underscores, right? So anything that has a slash, a hyphen, a dollar sign, a percent sign, SAS needs a special informat to know how to read those in, okay? So an example of this is down here in this data set. And let me just get a new colored pen. And pretty much we were working with this same data line. So we had three data lines that had price, region, and date. And so with our price, we see that price has a dollar sign. And because it has that special character dollar sign, we use an informat called dollar six, okay? Region is just regular letters, so SAS should be able to read that in. And with our dates, SAS, it has those slashes, so we need to do month, month, day, day, year, year, 10. And this is how the output would look. So let's actually look at this in SAS Studio. Okay. So why did I choose $6 versus $5 versus $8, et cetera? That's just how many um characters or numbers we have in that actual price so including the dollar sign in the decimal we have one two three four five six okay so that means that dollar six in format is going to follow the price region is a character so that's why we have the dollar sign after and then we're going to count the same amounts if for date so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay and so that way i use month month day day year year ten dot there is also date nine there's month month day day year year six there's a whole bunch of different informats that you can look up, but these are just a few examples. Dates are probably one of the most common informats that you'll utilize. All right, so now when we run this, we get the price read in, we get the region read in, and we get the date. Notice how the date looks off to us because SAS counts dates as integers. So January 1st, 1960 is day one. And from there, SAS increments by one for every day that pass. So in order to get the date readable to us, we would put a format statement above our input statement. And we can just say format date, month, month, day, day, year, year, 10. And that format is going to make that date actually readable to us, okay? So it's going to take it out of that integer format and have it as date format, okay? So this informat here just allows SAS to read in the date. This format statement here allows us to visualize it as a date. So it's going to actually visualize it as a date that's readable to us, right? So you need an informat in the input statement to read it in because it has special characters. And then this format statement will actually make it look like a date in your output data set. So that's an intro to informats. You will utilize these a lot, even if it is just for dates. There's a whole section of documentation on the different types of informats. Just remember, if your data is non-standard, aka it has a special character, such as a dollar sign, a hyphen, a slash, a percent sign, you would need to read that in using an informat. Now, this is only if you're typing in raw data or you're importing something other than um, a SAS data set, right? So a text file, an Excel file, a CSV. All right. <clears throat> So our three types of informats is going to be a character informat, which is going to have a dollar sign, a numeric informat, which is going to have the dot D. The D is optional. That just means the number of decimal places and then a date informat. OK, so those are your three main types of informats. 
All right, so let's briefly talk about functions in SAS and how we can utilize those functions. There are a ton of functions. There's character functions, date time functions, there's macros, financial functions, probability, and more, right? So there's a ton of different functions that you can utilize in SAS that I recommend that you look at the documentation for, okay? So I'm gonna show you an example of a couple of functions, all right? So we have a function here called seal and functions are shown up in blue if you're using SAS on demand for academics. And pretty much we're creating a new variable rounded underscore price and we're rounding that price up, okay, to the ceiling. So let's look at that. So this was our data set that we had, customer trans, which was just data lines, and we had our price variable in there. So now I'm going to create a new data set called customer trans one from that old data set that we just created above. And I'm going to create a new variable that's rounded underscore price that's going to round the price up using the seal function. So then when I run this, I see that price is now rounded up, okay? So it still has my original price in there. I have rounded price, 55, 63, 83, okay? So that's an example of a function. We also have other examples of a function. So I can also break out a date. So say for instance, I need the month in one column, the day in one column, the year in one column, because I'm going to try to look at some analysis of how customers are doing by month and also look at some analysis on how they're doing annually, okay? So I need to break those things up. So that would be the, another thing that I could do. So I, same thing in this same data set, we're gonna create a new variable called month and we're gonna set that equal to the month of the date variable that we have. And we're gonna create a new variable called year and we're gonna set that equal to the year of the date variable that we have in the data set. So all of these are creating new variables. So now we're gonna run it. And we see that we have the month and the year. So if you wanted to get the mean price that people have been spending in January, if this was a longer data set, you could do that now because your month is broken out into another column. And we're gonna have a long tutorial on data analysis in SAS. This is just giving you some fundamentals. You also can do concatenation. So what concatenation is, is when you add two character variables or two strings side by side. So we, if there's two variable columns that are characters and you wanna put them in the same column. So let's see an example of that. So we're gonna have a new data set that we're gonna create. And when we expand libraries, expand my libraries and expand SAS help, we're going to go down to the cars data set and I'm gonna double click on that. And say for instance, I want to combine make and model into one variable, okay? Both of these are characters because they're left aligned and also in my columns, it has this A there. That's how I know they are characters. So I wanna turn this into one variable. I wanna add them together pretty much. It's called concatenation. So I'm gonna say data. I'm gonna call this make model set, right? I'm going to read it from the existing sashelp.cars data set. And we're gonna create a new variable called make underscore model. And it's gonna be equal to cat X. The first argument is going to be what, how I want to separate these two and I wanna separate them with a space, okay? So I want us to have make space model. You can put a comma there, you can put a hyphen there, you can put a colon there. It's basically how you wanna separate the um, columns that you are trying to combine together. Then I wanna have make, and then I wanna have model. Notice that because this is a function, I separate it with commas. Okay, so in a lot, commas are rarely used in SAS unless they're in function format, right? So now 
when I run this and I scroll all the way to the right, I have my making my model combine. And notice that they're separated by spaces, okay? It's make space model. So that is what certain concatenation functions do. Cat X to me is a common one that I utilize because I can add how I wanna separate these two columns when I combine them together, I can add that delimiter, but there's also cats, there's also regular cat, things of that nature. So just look up how to concatenate uh, variables in SAS, but this one is pretty much widely used. Okay. So that those are a couple of examples of how we can utilize functions in creating new variables in SAS. There are date time functions where we can separate out a date for ourselves. There are rounding functions. There's a round function, a seal function, a floor function. If we want to clean up certain numbers in our data set, and we can combine variables that already exist in our data set by using concatenation functions, one of those being cat x. All right, so that was a lot. So we went over the data step, how to create new variables in data sets, how to create a data set from an existing SAS data set, how to create a data set from raw data, that we utilize data lines or we utilize the in file input statement. And we also learned about functions and informats. Now let's go into a couple of common basic procedures in SAS. And remember that procedures start with that keyword prop. So the first procedure that we're going to look at is proc contents, okay? So proc contents is a great procedure for data exploration. I can't tell you how important it is to look at your data first before you get too happy programming, okay? So it's always great to understand what's in your data, how you're going to manipulate that data, and what questions you're trying to get answered from your data, okay, before you just start programming. So proc contents is a very simple procedure that's going to allow us to look at our data before we start programming, okay? It's gonna give us information such as the names of our variables, how many observations and variables there are, the length, the variable type, et cetera. And it's very simple. It's literally proc contents, data equals the name of the data set that we want to look at and run, okay? So all of your proc steps are going to have the keyword proc, then it's going to have the name of what that procedure is, and then it's going to have data equals in the name of the data set that you want to run that procedure on. So let's look at an example of that, okay? So here, once again, we can expand libraries, my library, SAS help, and we're going to look at the air data set. So we're going to have proc contents data equals SAS help dot air, and we're going to run that. And this is what the contents procedure gives us, okay? It gives us when the data set was created and modified. It gives us how many observations we have in this data set. So this is a short data set. It has 144 observations or 144 rows. It only has two variables, okay? It tells us those variables down here, right? So it tells us what the name of the variable is, the type. So this is numeric versus character, the length, if there is a format there, and a label on it, okay? So it lets us explore what's in our data before we get started. And we can do the same thing with this cars data set above, right? So let's do a proc contents data equals SAS help dot cars. Once again, our cars has 428 observations, 15 variables. It tells you when it was created, okay? And then it has all of them down here, all right? So 
here it has all of our variables we see that this has a lot more variables than our air data set some of them have format so it looks like invoice is actually a price because it has dollar eight remember we already used dollar six above so that is an in format so that we're able to read in those dollar signs and then it also tells us that it's sorted by make type okay so this one is sorted by the make and then if and then it is sorted by the type so it has a two level sort on it so that is proc contents and i highly recommend that you do that and look at your data set before you start programming a next common procedure is proc sort and it's exactly what it sounds like it is sorting your data set so you can order your data set using proc sort okay if you want to utilize the by statement in proc print, which we're going to see on slide 57, you must sort your data first. Okay. So let's go back to SAS Studio and let's see an example of that. So here we have proc sort data equals sashelp.cars. How do you want to sort it? You want to sort it by the make. Okay. So then when we run this, Oh, I need to put an out data set. I'm all like, why isn't this working? Out equals cars. So pretty much what it was telling me is that you can't modify any of the data sets in SAS help, okay? That's not gonna let you override it. So you need to save it to a temporary output data set, okay? So here I'm saying, hey, this data set in SAS help, can you output output it to a new temporary data set in my work library called cars and can you sort it by make so if we go down and we collapse the sas help library and expand work we have cars here that is the actual output data set that we will be utilizing okay so now when i run this i i realize that this is sorted by make Okay, it was already sorted by make. So say, for instance, you wanted to sort this by type, right? We could. And we knew that it was already sorted by make because proc contents told us that it was sorted by make, right? So if we look at proc contents, it says that it's sorted by make and then it's sorted by type. Okay, so now we want to sort it by type only. And we can see that all of our types now that is out of order. So at first it started with Acura. Now it's starting with Honda because it is sorted exactly by the type. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, when we sort this, we can then use this in what we call a proc print procedure, which is going to print out pretty much a report of what you want to print out. Okay. So proc print data equals cars because our output data set above was cars. We only want to print out certain variables. So I'm going to print out the type, the invoice, the make, the model. I know that these are variables because if I go back on my left-hand side, expand libraries, expand SAS help, expand cars, it tells me the variables that are in there, right? And I also did a proc contents to know what variables were in there. So now I'm gonna say, hey, I want to print this by type. I can do this because I've already sorted by type. So if I want to use a by statement in proc print, I must sort it by that same statement before I run a proc print. And then I want to sum up the invoices by type. I want to have a title, car total invoices by type, and then the footnote of what department it came from and the day that it came from, okay? So now we can run our proc print and we can see what it puts out for us, okay? So I see that it broke out into different tables based off of the type. And I see that hybrids have had a total of 55,000 invoices, okay? SUVs 
has had a total of $1.9 million in invoices. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I see my footnote, auto analyst department, okay? And say for instance, I needed to quickly have a sum based off of type to see how many invoices we had outstanding for the year. And it also has my title. Okay, so that's an overview of proc sort and proc print. And keep in mind that you must sort your data using proc sort if you want to print out your data using a by variable. All right, so proc print, we just went over. This is a list of optional statements, okay? And we've seen all of this statement outside of the ID one. By statement, how you want to print it. Sum, how you want to sum up your numeric variables. And var, what variables you actually want to print out from the data set. So maybe you only need four or five variables from the data set that you want to look at. You can add titles, footnotes, where statements, and more. Okay. <clears throat> and we just went through this example in SAS Studio. This is our proc print. Make sure that it is sorted first if you want to use that by statement. All right, so two more main procedures that we're gonna go at. One is gonna be proc format, okay? So sometimes you want to format already existing data that's within a SAS data set. So for instance, maybe you want to change an abbreviation from F to female, okay? Maybe you want to bin certain variables right so say for instance you have an age variable and you pretty much want to bend them you can apply formats using proc format so let's look at this one because this one can be a little confusing when first looked at so pretty much i'm going to expand libraries my libraries sas help and i am going to double click on the class data set so when I look at this, say for instance, you are tasked with creating a new variable called gender that's not M and F, it's male and female, and then also bending the age. So you need to bend these students based off of if they're preteens or if they're teenagers slash high schoolers, right? And you don't have those variables in your data set. Now, <clears throat> you can do this using if statements, or you can do this using a procedure called proc format. So in this procedure, I have value and the name of my format is gender. It's a character format because I'm starting with a character, okay? So sex in this case is a character variable. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the name of the format that I'm trying to create and I'm just calling it gender. Now, these names of your formats can't be no more than eight characters long, okay? So keep that in mind. And I'm saying, anytime you see an M, change it to male. Anytime you see an F, change it to female. And then I'm creating a numeric format. It doesn't have a dollar sign in it because I'm looking at the age and age in my data set is numeric. So whatever is on the left-hand side of your format, okay, determines whether it is character or numeric. M and F are in quotes, they're characters, so I get the dollar sign. 11 is clearly a number, no dollar sign. And I'm saying 11 through 12-year-olds get preteen, 13 to however high this data set is gets teen. So that could be 17, 18, 19, 20. I mean, 17, 18, 19, <clears throat> right? I'm just saying high. But if I know that the highest number in my data set is 17, I could put a 17 there as well. Now, it's going to store this format so you can use it throughout your SAS program. So say, for instance, there's multiple data sets that you need to do this to. This is why it's ideal to just do a proc format, then 10 if then statements for every data set, okay? Because you can just apply this format. Now, in this proc print, I'm gonna say, hey, in this data set that we're looking at, this class data set, please format the sex 
to the gender format that I created above. Don't forget your period. Periods always come after formats and informats. And format that age column for me to the level format that I also listed above. So then when I run this, my output, now I have sex, it overwrote it as male and female. And now I have my age as teen and preteen. And maybe I wanted age in a categorical variable so I can do some analysis based off of the teens versus the preteens. And we're going to talk about analysis and why it's important to bend variables in our future tutorials. Okay, so that is proc format. Very, very powerful um, procedure that you will utilize a lot if you need certain formats for multiple data sets. The next thing that we're going to talk about is proc means, and this is a very, very common uh, procedure for just basic summary statistics. So proc means is going to give you things like your mean, your median, your standard deviation, the number of missing values, etc. You have multiple options that you can look at in proc means, okay, that we see here on the right hand side. So there's a maximum amount of decimals you can state. You can state you only want to see the max and the min. You can have the range. You want to see the number of missing values, et cetera. You can generate stats based off of a certain class using a class statement. So as I mentioned in the previous one, if I wanted to look at summary stats based off of teens and preteens, I could do that using proc means. So let's see how this is going to look like, okay? So once again, on my left-hand side, if I expand my libraries and I expand SAS help and I double-click baseball, say for instance, I wanted to get some summary statistics based off of the number of hits made by division. So I see division in this case is a character variable, okay? And it's all, read, all the way at the end. So I have the Amer American, Northwest, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And so proc means can do this for me. So once again, it's a procedure step. So it has the keyword proc, the name of the procedure that you want to run, and then data equals the data set that you want to look at. And I only want to look at the mean, the median, standard deviation, max min. I'm going to take out this maximum des equals two. I want to look at it by division. And I only want to look at the number of hits. Okay. So then when I run this, this is what I get out. I get all of the divisions. Okay. The number of observations in my data set that had that. So I see that AW is the most popular division in my data set. I get the mean number of hits, the median career hits, the standard deviation, the max and the min. Now, this looks like it's too many decimal points for me. So what if I wanted to round these numbers? That's when I would go in and do max des equals two. I only want to round it to two decimal places. And then now I can look at it, read it a little bit better. Okay. So this gives me summary statistics. I can say, hey, the standard deviation in NE is, you know, a little bit low, but in NW is high. So the players are not consistent with each other in the NW league and division. Okay. All right. That is proc mean. So very, very good for just summary statistics of prices, for number of purchases, things that you want to look at by region. You want to look at some summary statistics by type, things of that nature. Very, very powerful procedure that we're going to talk about in our statistics overview. All righty. Last but not least is outputting data. So just like we have proc import, we have proc export, okay, where you can export your data. So in this example here, you would use the proc export procedure in the data set that you want to export. So this is a work data set called hotels. Where you want to export it to, okay, 
what delimiter or database management system you want to utilize. Okay, so you're saying the database management system is DLM and the delimiter that you're using is an ampersand and you would run this. Now, if you're using on demand for academics and say for instance, you want to export this customers, you would just right click it, hit export, okay? and you can export it to your files home, expand server files home, find that it was a CSV, right? And then I would just hit download. Okay, so I would just hit the download button up here. So very easy to do it inside SAS On Demand for Academics. If you do not have SAS On Demand for Academics, you can write out the procedure step where you want to export your file at okay but here once again you can just expand libraries expand your work in this case right click hit export okay export it into the server files and folders location i'm just going to replace it go to server files and folders click on it and then download it with the download button okay all right so that is our SAS fundamentals guide to get you started with the basics of SAS. Pretty much we have covered a lot here. What is SAS? It's a great software used for statistical analysis, machine learning, and AI, and as well as for reporting and data visualization. It's still widely used in tons of in industries, including the government, healthcare, and financial industry. It is a program made up of statements that end with semicolons, and these statements comprise a step, okay? And there's two main steps that we talk about, data and proc steps. Data steps are for our data manipulation, creating new variables, et cetera. Proc steps are for processes and data analysis, their procedures. You can comment your SAS code using two types of comments. It's very recommended that you utilize these comments so other people that utilize your code know exactly what your program does. SAS is able to create what we consider SAS data sets, okay? Where the columns are the variables and the rows are the observations and those two combined make up data sets. There are two main types of variables, character and numeric. If it's a character variable, it's going to be left justified in the data set. If it is a numeric variable, it's going to be right justified in the data set. We covered missing variables. So if it's a numeric variable, missing values are going to be denoted by a period. And if it's a character variable, missing values are going to be denoted by a blank. We talked about what the log is. So the log is very important to look at to make sure that we're not losing data. You can utilize the put statement to actually write comments to the log based off of a certain condition. And it's always, always good to check your log even if your code runs and you don't see that big X. It's gonna tell you how long it took for that code to run. So if you're working on trying to make your programs more efficient, you can look at the time it takes to see if you're getting better on coding more efficiently. It also will let you know if you have lost data. Okay, SAS On Demand for Academics is a free cloud software. I have the link on how you can download that software in the description below. And you can also use a window and environment as well. SAS Libraries, the work library is gonna store those temporary data sets. The SAS Help Library is going to store those sample data sets. And I know that if I just have one level name, that is going to automatically go to my work data set. I can import data right into SAS Studio, I mean, SAS On Demand for Academics itself by right clicking under my servers and files and hitting import data. Or I can do a proc import step if I'm using a Windows environment. 
Now diving into the data step, I can create new SAS data sets from existing ones. I can create SAS data sets from raw data, such as text files, CSV files, or data that's typed right into the SAS interface. I can stack data sets, create new variables, modify existing data, et cetera. The list goes on. We talked about how to read raw data using the input statement where the dollar sign is gonna come after character variables and it's gonna tell us the exact column that each one of these are in. We talked about amazing if then statements and if then do statements. Keep in mind that if then do statements are going to be if I have two actions based off of a condition. We talked about informats and in our examples, we use a dollar and a date informat and informats are used if you have data that has special characters in it that SAS will not read such as dollar signs, hyphens and slashes. We talked about some common functions so we can combine variables using concatenation functions. We have rounding functions, we have date time functions, we have statistic functions, financial functions, et cetera. We also covered how we can review our data using proc contents and explore it to know what types of variables are in there, how big our data set is, when the data set was created, et cetera. We can sort our data, format our data, and most importantly, get summary statistics using a common proc means function. So that was a lot, but that should get you started with understanding some of the basics of the SAS programming language. I highly recommend that you download SAS On Demand for Academics and practice coding. You have tons of sample data sets in your SAS help library for you to go through this, back up this video, pause it, and try to code some of this on your own. Create a new conditional statement. Um, look up a new function that you can create create a new variable, et cetera. So thanks for tuning in with Learning with Jelly. I hope you enjoyed this long tutorial to get you started with SAS programming. And please stay tuned for our next lesson, which is gonna be SAS basics when it comes to statistics and statistical analysis. Thank you all. Please like, comment, and subscribe and have an amazing day.